Welcome to the Pink Mug. This episode was recorded during our annual Design for Life Women's Conference. And we believe that it is so important to the social climate we are experiencing in our world. As sisters who love Jesus, we are called to stand together in the midst of a divided culture. And our special guest, Onika McClellan of Shoreline City Church, brings a gracious and powerful perspective to the sisterhood as we walk together in unity. Hello there. Thank you for joining me and Onika Hi. for this breakout session. We're so excited. Um, this is called Side by Side I Sister love Head. it. We're, we're side by side. Side by side. And, you know, seriously, we're side by side with you right now. And thank you for just jumping in and being a part. Um, we have prayed so much about this session. I truly believe it is a God ordained moment, mm -hmm. not only for Anika and I, but for you as well. In fact, um, you know, you just might have a pen and paper near or your Bible too, right. because I believe God's gonna speak to your heart. Um, I don't know where you're at in your journey with uh, sisterhood and just um, having girlfriends and mm -hmm. just walking through all that means. Sometimes there's challenges. Right, you right. Know? And um, relationships, you have to walk through hard moments because we value that. God values relationships. We value relationships through Design for Life and we believe in sisterhood. We believe in connecting. Yeah. In fact, if the camera can get the shot of the LED screen, I just love it's what so the pretty. team put together. The set is so beautiful. And I want you to see this, the graphic because it's so gorgeous. beautiful. And it just represents my heart for you, my heart for the world, that God, especially believers yeah. and followers of Jesus, that God would unite us at even a deeper level during this time of history, because we got a, we got a job to do, girls. Um, there's a world out there yeah. that needs to see us walking in unity and, and walking in grace and forgiveness and love. And so that's what that's what this session is about. I want to grow in. I want to grow. Yeah, and in my just how how can I love people better? And so as we were processing conference this year, which if you've been a part of the journey and, and just listened to some of the sessions and heard me chat about conference, you know, when we made the transition to online, I just felt God speaking to my heart to add some components to conference. One was to have breakout sessions, which Onika, we don't get to have the luxury to right. break out in small groups because the numbers are so big and right. the arena, especially where we host conference, you know, it will seat like 8,000, but there's no small rooms right. where we can gather smaller groups. So I was like, this is the perfect opportunity because online gives us the opportunity yeah. to talk about specific topics, which we may not have time at, yeah. during conference, like a live conference setting. And so I was praying about that and felt God drop in my heart to do a, a conversation just regarding unity, which we all know that's sort of a hot topic these days. Yeah. And so God in his divine leading the on the path as we, we are talking yep. about, the, that's kind of like part of the theme. He, he connected me to this girl. So just a little secret, she's also gonna be with us for Design for Life 2021. Awesome, so you're like, oh, you didn't, don't need, all you did is see her face and you're excited about that because she glows with God's presence, I'm telling you. So anyway, that's kind of how it evolved. And what's so cool about that is here in the middle of a shutdown, yeah. God through his grace connects us. Yeah. You know, it's like that verse in Ephesians, God can do anything right. he wants to do. And so, so excited. Love you so, well. so much, you. so much. I and God, I just want to tell the girls, together. I've been following your conference journey and your pastor for years. And she is even more amazing in person than oh she goodness. is online. Mm -hmm. And just watching what God trusts you wow. with, the way you steward it, the Praise way you God. honor and value and see yeah. women. It is just stunning. So I'm not surprised at the global impact of wow. this entire conference because Amazing. who's stewarding it is stewarding yes. it so beautifully. Amen. And so I'm so excited to be with y'all and I love you so much. <laughs> oh, well, it was love so you. fun. Love you too. So thankful that you have taken time to be here. And I know it's a big, big deal because mm. 
her and her husband Earl McClellan lead Shoreline City, yes. City, yeah. Shoreline City Church in Dallas. Yep. And they have three little ones, well, big and little, right. honestly. A right. 15 year old, yes. which is crazy. It's so crazy. A 15 year old, a 10 year old, and a five year old. Yes. You know, you you planned better than we did. <laughs> It's wild we, in our house. It's we wild. We had three in 30 months. We, no, we couldn't figure out. Just boom, out boom, the, boom. Like a plan, yeah. So you, you were really organized. Yes, <laughs> the, spa the spacing was good theoretically because we thought, okay, after we have our first, then our second can bring us little snacks and be yeah, mom and dad's little perfect. helpers. But Is now that how it worked? It did work that way, okay. but now that they're 5, 10, and 15, they all have different needs. Yes. And so we feel like we're stretched in all the directions, but we're making it work. Our house is loud and but crazy, but it's fun. But year old whose name is Parker. Parker, he paved the way. He really did. Yes. He so really now did. So you kind of, kind of know what to do. Kind of, yes. With Grayson. Exactly. And, and L. L. Yes. And I think there's a, they're going to put a picture yes. on the screen so you can see this adorable family. Oh my goodness. But, um, you know, just thank you. Thank you for so just taking time, here. carving time out of busy life to be here. And we got to sit and chat last yes. night and it was so fun. And you know what I love is we, we like, we bonded. We're sisters. We're we like so legit bonded. sisters. Yeah. I'm like, how did you cope with COVID when you were like completely shut down and, yeah. you know, hunkered down in your house? And she said, I... I found a new cookbook. I'm like, you are my twin. Oh my goodness. It literally, <laughs> That's exactly what everyone I did. has the thing that they need to do to just stay sane yes. and to not lose your mind. And for me, it's been cooking. I've tried hundreds of recipes, so all fun. these different cookie recipes, soup recipes, and it's yes. how I kind of forget about the wildness. I know. And it just brings me joy. And I'm not yes. mad about it because no. I'm feeding everybody, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> And then you cleaned out drawers and closets. Oh, we and, just turned our, this yeah. whole season into a home edit and everything's organized and labeled and now we can find things. So, so we turned it into something But everybody good. copes differently. Yeah. And you know, that's kind of what our conversation is sort of about today mm -hmm. is, you know, during the season, it's been, it has been just a crazy yeah. wild year. Yeah. You know, from the get-go, really, right. with um, the rumors of COVID yes. in January and February. And I remember John and I were on vacation, actually, in Hawaii. Wow. And things were starting to, like, brew and yep. bubble. Like, what's going on, you know? And and then we came back home, and within weeks, it was just, like, I think, like, two weeks. Right. It was like everything was shutting down. So that was, like, the first, like, what is happening? And then with the you know, church not being open. That was right. just like a, just another crazy yep. thing that we have all processed. And some of you, even in your world today, you're still not gathering right. in your churches in person. You know, I so get that, how hard that is. And so that was another layer. Yep. And then we had tragic yep. racial challenges that were just honestly horrendous and hard to watch. And yeah unfortunately still playing out yep. to some degree yep. and just praying for God to help us as leaders, as followers of yep. Jesus to just to navigate this yep. with his grace, his love, yep. all of it, all of Beautiful. it in our families. Yep. Yep. I mean, I heard a statistic just, um, just last week, I believe that um, divorce rate went up by wow. 37%. So it's, it's, it's real yep. and the emotions that you're facing or that you've experienced yeah. for whatever reason, That's right. whatever layer has caused yeah. emotion to bubble up within you, you know, it's not, emotions aren't wrong. They're right. a part of who we are and, and how God has wired us, yep. but how we process those emotions and, and navigate them with the people around us. Yeah. And in this conversations with our sisters, you know, um, God, God yeah. wants to help us to do that in love, in grace, in honesty. That's right. That's right. Um, but that that respects and and uh, honors the girl around us, or the girls around us, or the people around us, are mm -hmm. are the people that God has put in our world that we are able to influence. And and so you know, today we're really going to focus yeah. on just the the challenges that have have really resurfaced. Yes. I mean, they've been around yep. a long time That's when right. it comes to to racial racial issues. I mean, and honestly, I talked to Onika about this last night, how 
I, I want to word things well. I would never, ever, in a million years, want to offend one girl ever. But as we've navigated this, there's been times that I know I've not uh, communicated my right. heart in a way that was understood, mm. you know? And, and so, you know, I think I want this conversation to be very raw, which, yeah. yes. you know, we talk, is there any question off limits? Because I'm I like, said, ask I'm me like, anything. <laughs> <laughs> because this girl has such a heart for you and a heart to see God work during this season um, to draw us, to knit our hearts together. And for girls right now that are watching and you have, layer upon layer upon layer of hurt. And maybe in the community that you're living in, it's just been disrupted by all the tension and, and caused maybe even more tension in your circle and in maybe in your job situation, right. your family, I don't know, your, even your church. We pray that this conversation just helps create a pathway yep. for you. Yep. Uh, to healing, um, even to give you ideas of how you can restore relationships. Yes. So, yes. you know, so that's, that's kind of the foundation for it. But, you know, Anika, just even off camera, just yeah. now you were saying how one of the things that's hard is there's so many hurts right now, right, so many right. layers of hurts. And yet in the, in the middle of this, even the word of God calls us to walk in joy. That's right, right, and, right, right. And there's, there's, girls around us, people around us that are experiencing good birth, right, baby, right, babies weddings. coming into the world, right, weddings right, coming, right, right. weddings happening, which is so awesome. And you know, you were sharing, you have some friends that just bought a house. Exactly. Actually, we bought a house right. in the middle of the pandemic. Right, we right, right. We, yeah. were, we were talking about <laughs> how there's such a juxtaposition in our world right now to wait and a heaviness and a mourning and a pain. Yeah. And then at the same time, we have friends that are celebrating life moments with new yeah. houses and babies so and engagements. And I feel like as girls, as God's girls, we have to have the grace to step foot yeah. in both at the same time, which is not always easy, yes. which is why we need the presence of God to grace us to do that. Yes. Because in one moment we're crying because yes. of all that it just feels like there's so much heaviness and death and pain and yes. injustice and just all of it. Yes. So one minute we're weeping and yeah. then another minute we're rejoicing yeah. because one of our best friends just had a baby. And you almost feel guilty. Exactly, we're talking yeah. about that. If you're having a life moment with your kids, you must feel guilty for posting joy yeah. because you don't want to come across insensitive to what's happening in the world around us. But at the end of the day, we can't judge each other. Well, that's right. And I was thinking as you're even saying that, there's, there's seasons of, well, honestly, John and I, during the pandemic, yeah. we were like on each, you know, the stress yeah, of it. Right. The, the stress it's real. Was real. It's real. It's so you know, real. And, and I can relate to you because you would hear others talk or yeah. have conversations where people were like, they were, re, they were celebrating something. Right, you know, like, right. Must you know, be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Girl. Good for you. Good for yeah, you. You should be in my house right now. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, I was plastering. I mean, just to survive. Yeah. There was about three weeks in there, and just to survive, I plastered the house with scriptures. Scriptures, yeah. Like, because I, I just like. We need it right now. Right. We need the word of God That's more right. than ever. And I need That's to be right. reminded to be speaking yep. life right yep. now. Yep. And then the whole social media thing, just, it was, it was like lot. on steroids, you yeah. know, it was like good gravy. How do you keep up with this? Right. And how do you know what to say and when what, to say it? And, and what not to say. Oh, yeah. And when to just listen. Yeah. yeah. So talk about that a little bit. How do you use social media? Right. And how do you guard yourself from a trap. Right, right, know? right, right, right. Um, it's not easy because yeah. social media is such a great, can be used for good yeah. or can also be used for destruction. And so we just have to choose what lens we're going to dive yeah. into when we jump on social media. Mm -hmm. I think if you go in, it's kind of like when you're shopping and you're going on a mission, you know, when you're just yeah. looking for that right item. So you can spend your time wasting hours in other yeah. stores when you know that they don't have it, or you can focus yeah. in on look for what you're looking for. And I think that's what social media is so important for us to go in. Yes, on what we're okay. looking for, which is to find comfort from friends, to know how to pray for people, to stay in touch. Also, of course, yes. to be um, aware of what's going yeah. on in the world around us, but you can get lost 
in a sea mm -hmm. of a conversation that can take you down a path that you weren't planning to go, or you can find yourself, if your heart is not in a healthy place, lashing out yeah. um, just because that pain um, overwhelms you in that moment, and then you regret what you said. Yes. And so we just need discernment and grace yes. and patience and guidance. And even sometimes it's okay to screenshot something. See, I'm thinking about posting this, but somebody what you trust you and love. Oh, that's so yeah. good. Is it okay that I say this right now, or does yeah. this sound like I've lost my mind? Well, I think when we're in real one-on-one -on -one conversations, yeah. we're way more apt to be thinking about, okay, you know, as you're talking, do you think like I do? Like a bazillion thoughts in your head? Yeah. You know, I mean, a girl can do that. Exactly. I don't know how they can have a conversation We're multitasking. thinking about what they're cooking for dinner. Exactly. But, um, you know, we'll we'll be way more apt to filter right. what exactly. we're saying if we're sitting across yeah. from somebody, mm -hmm. then it's almost like we lose our filter. Yep, 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 yep. And, and we have to just be just as much aware of you know, how, how could this be processed? Right. And as well, just be, you know, just like we would give grace to somebody if we're sitting exactly. across the table from them. To if we that. read something, yes. to yes. not go, you know, let those emotions stir up into something that they, where they shouldn't go. Right, right, and right. And then we're like, you know. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's so good. I love that shopping illustration. Exactly, it's, yeah. That is so good. Should, would I go there? Do I need right. to go there? Right. Why am I going there? That's right. You know, and I think too, your brain can get overloaded and then you stop processing things exactly. well. Exactly. I feel like now yeah. more than ever, we have to stay planted in God's word. We have to stay in yes. community. We have to speak life so to one good. another because of all the things that um, are wanting to be consumed by us right yeah. now. We have to filter it out by the good and what we know is true. Yes, that's so, so good. Okay, we're gonna jump in deep right Here now. Here we go. <laughs> Pray for us, girls. Pray for us. I <laughs> you know, when it comes to social media, you know, there's some, I don't know, hot topic is yeah. a good word, but that's kind of the word that comes to yeah. mind or, or uh, triggers. Right. And, and one of the, the things, hashtag Black Lives Matter, has been just taken all sorts of different directions. And there's honestly a lot of different views on right. how should we process that organization sure and even that that thought that hashtag that statement and i have a strong opinion that yes hashtag that all you want girlfriend because it's true yes. it's right it's honorable to say but that's not always what you hear right and how do you view it <laughs> yeah, I would say how if, should how yeah. do you think I should view sure. Black Lives Matter? Yeah, I think in the midst of what is happening in our world today and right now, more than ever. So when we when we have our friends and our sisters yes. that um, we're across the table from or online with, sometimes people will say turn in a whole argument of why they shouldn't say that phrase. Yeah. And at the end of the day, your brother or sister in most cases just want to know that they matter. Yes. and that you value them and that you see them. And so it's so important to lock eyes or through text or however yeah. that you um, communicate instead of all the questions of well, what does that mean? And if I say that, does this yeah. mean this and this and this? And you find yourself on this rabbit trail that you mm -hmm. just get lost in and you never mm -hmm. come back. That person across from you or that person whose relationship with you feels like you're thinking that they don't value or they yeah. don't matter. And so that simple statement, it's similar to finances. Finances take on the person personality of the person who's handling it. And so if you have good intent and you're doing great things and you're helping your community and you're moving mm -hmm. others forward, then those finances take on something so beautiful. Mm -hmm. If you have a negative intent, then you can do terrible things with your finances. Same thing with a phrase yeah. like Black Lives Matter. It's who's saying it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I know for me, a person of color, I just want to hear you matter. Yeah. I'm so sorry for all that's going on in our world today. How can I pray for you? How can I stand with you, tell me your story. I want to be leaned into you. But sometimes people will spend hours and send all these research and screenshots on why mm -hmm. they can't say that. Mm -hmm. And it makes the person on the other side in 
many cases feel not valued, not wanted, so not welcomed. And we were talking last night over dinner, mm -hmm. and I've heard someone say this before, and I think it's a perfect analogy. Just like many of us say, I'm proud to be an American. I, I love, love my this. country. This is so good. You need to listen to this. Um, many of us, you know, say, I'm proud to be an American. Yeah. I love my country. I have my flags in yeah. my yard and my flag t-shirts, and I'm yeah. so thankful for our forefathers and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's a narrative in our mm -hmm. land today. Mm -hmm. But we don't agree 100% with every single thing our forefathers done. They have gotten it wrong mm -hmm. on many occasions. Mm -hmm. But just because you say, I love that I'm an American, mm -hmm. doesn't mean you're putting your seal of approval mm -hmm. on every single thing that has mm -hmm. happened in American history, because there's many things mm -hmm. that we both would not approve of. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same way when you tell mm -hmm. someone a black life matters, it's not saying that you stand for every single That's thing so that good. you've ever heard associated with mm -hmm. that phrase. In that moment, you're just telling someone you matter. I see you. I love you. I value right. you. I'm so sorry for your pain. Yes. And because you're in pain, I'm in pain. That's exactly right. And that's, that's what the point is. If, if there's somebody hurting, and yep. we see that in scripture over All the and time. over again, we go, we, we run to that person to assure them of our love and our care and to bind their wounds. Yep. There's a lot of hurt and pain right. that is surfacing right now. And so we want to be sensitive to that and care about it and reach out with love and words right. that are healing and hope filled and kind and loving. That's and, right. you know, and I think that brings up another um, just aspect of this. And I was talking to one of our team members just mm -hmm. about how to talk to their kids, yeah. you know, because they're, there's just, there's, there's so many complexities to it. Right, and right, right, right. So with regards to your kids, because yeah. you have 15, 10, yeah. which I'm sure, and, and five, and I'm right. sure you're processing it with them from a For different sure. point of view. For sure. But each one is, is at a different level of understanding. Exactly, exactly. So how are you, how are you helping them right. with these issues. Yes, we talked a little bit about this when we visited not too long ago, but for our sons in particular, we feel a responsibility to remind them that the world that we live in now is not the world it's not complete yet. Mm -hmm. So God is still at work. He hasn't left. He's still on the yeah. throne, but he's still at work and he's working through us to um, bring unity, to bring yeah. hope and to bring life. But it's like a canvas that's not complete yet. And so until it's complete, we have to arm them with wisdom mm -hmm. and knowledge and even how to carry themselves in all mm -hmm. situations. Because unfortunately we live in a world where yeah. not everyone values everyone. Yeah. And so for us, what that looks like practically is we just remind them that they have to, it's, it's such a juxtaposition yeah. where we are raising them to be leaders, to be influencers, to be world changers, yeah, to, to know that there's, people. to love people, to have compassion, yeah. to know that there's no yeah. limit to what God can do on the inside of them. Yeah. But at the same time, realizing that we do live in a very broken world. Yeah. Exactly. So they're not taking by surprise when things happen to them. And so our oldest has already had a couple opportunities where he has been treated differently because of the color of his skin. Does which he is, process that with you? He does, but because we've prepared him, not in a fear-based way mm -hmm. of like, the world's against you, you're never mm -hmm. going to get ahead. Not that way at mm -hmm. all, because we believe that God's hand is upon his life and all of our kids are going to do great things. Wow. But at the same time, we have to equip him and coach him mm -hmm. that not everybody sees him the way that we see him. Yeah. Not everybody sees him the way you see him. Like you see promise, you see purpose, yeah. you see God's yeah. hand, but not everyone yeah. sees that, unfortunately. And so we've had several times where he's been with friends and he's the only one that looks like him in that moment. And for instance, he was at a basketball game and it was in a small town and he's the only African-American student on the team. Mm -hmm. And we were walking into the gymnasium and the person at the desk let everyone come in except for him and said, you have to pay. And oh yes, and the team had to say he's with us. So and so this just happened, you know, six months ago. Wow. And so it's still very real, mm -hmm. but at the same time, he doesn't live in fear or think every time I leave the house, someone's gonna do something mm -hmm. to discriminate against me. But at the same time, we have to prepare him on how to handle himself when that does happen. So it's almost like teaching him to 
walk with wisdom. Exactly. But walk by faith. Exactly. At the same time. Because he's surrounded <laughs> by so many people that love him, that yeah. believe in him. All of his teachers just so think good. he hung the moon. And so he's used to lots of affirmation and encouragement. But we have to coach him yeah. and remind him that not everyone sees him the way yeah. that we all see him. You know, I feel yeah. like we should pause right Let's now do and it. you should talk. I think there's mom out there. Yeah. And she's experiencing yeah. some of that hatred mm. and wrong yeah. that you've walked through. And she needs to hear a word from you that, yep. that God's with her. That's right, that's right, that's Could right. You? Yes, yes, yes. Wherever you find yourself today, yes. if your heart is heavy, if it is burdened, if you feel forgotten, if you feel unloved, if you're filled with grief because of all of the pain you're facing, or if you're like me, you're yeah. a mom, where yes, you've had instances God. where you have literally seen blatant racism against your child, First of all, we just want to say we're so sorry. Yes. Love Jesus. you so much. You are doing such a great job raising your world changer. And in the midst of all that's going on in our world, I just encourage you to lay hands on your children, to pray yeah. over your children, to speak life over your children, to speak the promises of God over your children, because it is our prayers, right. our late nights, our walking back and forth saying that this is going to be the future that God has for my son, no matter, or daughter, no matter yeah. what circumstances they face, that the hedge of protection will be around them, that we can walk in confidence and boldness and authority as God's daughters, knowing that God has the final say about our children. So I just want to encourage you to not give up. I want to encourage you to speak life into your child. I want to encourage you to cry when you need to cry, to write in your journal when you need to write wow. in your journal, to blast worship music when you need to blast worship music. But at the end of the day, keep running the race, keep leaning in, keep staying connected. Even when you feel like you're going through the motions, God is going to honor that. And we're believing the best days are ahead for your family. That's so good. And as well, you know, I haven't mentioned this a lot through the conference, but um, you can go into the chat right now. And if you need a friend to connect with or to pray with you right yeah. now, they're actually leaders online that would love to connect with you, to encourage your heart, to get you resource you need or pray with you. We're in this together, girls, seriously. We you are. are not alone. You're not. You are not alone. Even if you feel alone, you are not alone. Right. And so, beautiful, Anika, that was so beautiful. And I just wanna say one last thing. If the, people are gonna let us down, they yeah. just do. Yeah. Even with the best intentions. Right. And so we have to keep putting our hope and our trust and the weight of our pain yeah. on Christ because he's the yeah. only one who's actually designed to carry every single bit of yeah. our pain and our heartache because someone's gonna miss it. They're gonna get it yeah. wrong. They're gonna say the wrong thing yeah. to us. Um, so we have to keep our focus in him. And that's what I have to yeah. do for myself. That's so true. You have to think the best of others. Yep. And you know, there obviously there are, as we've been mentioning, there's people out there that they don't, honestly, Many of them just don't know Jesus. I mean, bottom yeah. line, they, they need a savior and they don't have the hope that we have or the tools that we have in Christ to process things rightly. But even as a believer, there's times my emotions get in the way and, and I mishandle my words and, or out of naivety, right. you know, I just don't, in my conversation, know that I'm not, I don't know that I'm not saying something that is gonna be life-giving to that person. So, you know, to be gracious when that happens to, you know, a friend around you or your pastor or your leader, to know, man, to believe the best in them, that they, they, they love you, they care about you, but they're learning too. That's right. They're growing too. Okay, I cannot believe how fast this is going. I know, it's <laughs> flying by. Oh, so th this question I, I love, as a sisterhood, as girls that are striving with all their heart to follow mm. Jesus, yeah. what would you hope? What would your hope be right. when we come out of this? I pray that we allow Jesus to bring us closer together. Yeah. I pray that we are a sisterhood that rises up to wash one another's feet with our tears, yeah. just like in scripture. Yeah. I pray that we're able to see each other with compassion, with grace, with yeah. hope, with truth, with honesty, with authenticity, and not feel the need to have it all together and to say the right yeah. thing, but that we're grace-filled, we're loving, we're honest, we're truth, mm -hmm. truth-filled and bold, but at the same time show great compassion so and good. humility and are drawn closer together and not further apart. Our world needs to see us linked oh my goodness. and yes. united and mm -hmm. just 
for one another because when our world sees that, mm -hmm. I feel like it's the answer. It's part of the answer. So good. There's a verse of scripture that yeah. has been honestly on my heart for this session. And I'm going to look it up because I want to, yes. I want to read part of it. Yes. This is in Philippians 2. And quite honestly, this, this portion of scripture in God's word time and time again has the Holy Spirit's brought it to my attention to remind me to be like Jesus, yeah. to do everything I can to be like him. And if we're going back to the first session that we had Thursday night, you know, if we're, if we're following Jesus, if our eyes are on yeah. Jesus, he's going to help us That's process right. all these challenges with his grace and by his grace. But there's these words in Philippians that are just so powerful. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I memorized it years ago in a different version. And it says, do, in the version I memorized, it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition. Wow. Philippians 2. Or so vain good. conceit, but in humility, that. consider everyone, everyone better than yourself. Wow. That's, that's such a tall order. It is, it is. You know, and right away what the author is saying is you have to lay down your pride. Yeah. And honestly, until we do that, we cannot love, we cannot love like we're supposed to. Yeah. We can't. But in the, in this version, which I, I'm, I'm going to read it all to you because it's so good. It's out of, it's out of the um, Passion Translation, which is a beautiful, so beautiful, poetic translation of scripture. But it says in Philippians 2.2, 2, so I'm asking you, my friends, that you be joined together in perfect beautiful. unity. Perfect unity. How do we do that? Being of one heart, yeah one passion and united in one love. Walk together with one harmonious purpose and you will fill my heart with abounding joy. Awesome. Oh, that, I mean, don't you, don't you just want to say that to all the girls around you? Oh my you? goodness. Just walk with one heart, yeah. one passion. Yep. And then that joy comes because you're not comparing, exactly. you're not analyzing or over everybody's yeah. words right. or overthinking. Right, 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 right. right. Or, um, and then it goes on to say, be free from pride filled opinions. Wow. Boy, if just right there, if we would take oh hold my of goodness. that one truth. Oh my goodness. That, guess what girls? I don't always get it right. You don't always get it right. You know, we're not, it's just, right. but if we feel like we always one have to, or that we always do, it's going to put a wall up right. between us and the sisters around us. So be free, get rid of all pride filled opinions for they will only harm your cherished unity. Wow. But in authentic humility, put everyone first and view others as more important than yourselves. Abandon every display of selfishness. Wow. Ah. Ouch. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Ouch. Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interests. And then wow. it goes on to say, consider the example of Jesus, because if you do that, I mean, he, he's our, he's our, our example and he's, mm -hmm. he's the perfect example. And maybe there's, maybe you're right now, you're going, oh my goodness, this is so convicting, but mm -hmm. how, how do I move on? I struggle with this or, or I'm really angry with that person for right. what they said. Right, right. Or, you know, it, it could be a lot of things or that post or what they wrote and I can't lay it down. You know, if, if you allow the Holy Spirit to work in your heart, he'll help you forgive. He'll help you move forward. He'll help you get rid of that offense, which Pastor Robert just yes. spoke on um, this morning. He will help you lay that down and help you move forward and, and mend yeah. what's been broken so it can be unified again. So powerful, but it takes intentionality. That's right. It's not gonna happen, you know, just by, you have to choose it. That's right. You have to choose to say, I, I want to be different. I want to, right. I want to view my sisters around me yeah. in a different light through a lens that is filled with grace. That's right. And compassion. That's right. And mercy. Exactly. Exactly. So good. And as you were talking, I was thinking how more than ever, those of, when, those of us that are Christians and we say that we are Christians, yeah. 
it's so important that when someone's sharing about their pain, that we just don't scripture it away. So if someone's hurt about, you know, an injustice that's exploding in our Mm -hmm. world, if we just say, if everybody just knew Jesus, this wouldn't happen. Like in that moment, it doesn't actually bring healing. That's not doing Jesus. Exactly, exactly, (laughs) exactly. And so I feel like now more than ever, as God's daughters, that we really have to represent Christ well and get it right on our watch. It's like Jesus when he saw Zacchaeus, who was like a, honestly, scripturally a terrible sinner. Right, right, right. He he didn't go, okay, come down. I'm going to read you what what I have written. Exactly. He said, I want to come to your house. And sit with you. you. And that if we did that. I want to hear, where are you at? What have you experienced? And, And how can I be a friend? Exactly. How can I be a friend to you? And carry your pain. Exactly. Exactly. So good. Well, would you mind praying? I would love over, to. Over the girls and honestly, over me. I know there's leaders out there and um, they're just they're just needing God to help them lead during this time and to to have the wisdom to know what to do yes. and when to do it. Yes, yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. So maybe pray for leaders and then pray to. for all the girls. I would love to. Jesus, have your way. Praise you, God. Father God, we thank you so much for this beautiful opportunity to come together. And we just ask that your presence would invade us no matter where we are listening to this moment. Would you just invade us with your presence, with your love, with your grace, and with your mercy? And would you remind us that he who began a good work will see it to total completion? And we just pray right now for every broken heart, that every heart that just feels wide open, filled with pain. And we just ask that the healing of your presence would come in and bring healing to those places that we feel like we can't show or that we can't let God in on. We just ask, Father God, that after this time together that we would fall more in love with you and more in love with each other. And I'm reminded of a scripture that in Galatians 4, 4, it says, Jesus came into this world born of a woman. And we just ask, Father God, that you remind us of the seeds that you placed on the inside of us, that we would bear good fruit in this season, that beautiful things would be birthed in women all over the world during this season, that grace, hope, peace, mercy, justice, and love would be birthed through your daughters, Father God. We ask that you remind us of the seeds that you placed on the inside of us, the calling that you placed on the inside of us, the prayers that we hear, Father God, that we would say those prayers out loud and that we would get to see revival in our generation. And we just lift up every single leader that is with us today, every yes, leader and pastor from all God. walks of life Praise that feels you. like they're falling short, that feels ill-equipped, that feels like they're afraid to say something because they don't want to say the wrong thing. You're those leaders that actually have felt like people have said the wrong things to them. No matter where we find ourselves today, Father, would you just meet us? Yes, would you just equip us? Would you renew our minds? Would you give yes, us the God. mind of Christ? Would you give us the compassion to lean into one another that you would go before us in our conversations, that you would go before us in our meetings, that you would go before us as we're planning the future of our churches and our organizations? Would you send gap fillers, bridge builders, Father God, to come alongside us in this time to just yes, share God. perspective that we might not be aware of and may we have teachable hearts and spirits so that we can grow and come together like never before. We thank you for the mandate that is on this conference, the call that is on Pastor Debbie and her entire team. And we thank you for the impact that this conversation is going to make for generations. Would you bless and seal every part of this conversation in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I want you to share that scripture before we close out. Yes. Before we do that, I feel led to tell you and you'll know if this is for you personally, that you need to text that friend, direct message that maybe it's a former friend because of something you said or a hurt you're carrying or a, uh, just a, an unforgiving spirit that you have right now towards her. And God is speaking through his spirit to you right now. And he's saying, you need to mend that, you need to mend that relationship, but don't wait for her. You be the first one to reach out. Reach out today. Tell her, hey, I love you. I know you're hurting and I'm here for you. And I I believe God is going to restore relationships. That's right. That he's doing it right now in this moment. And we have to make a choice. It might be a mom or a daughter. That's right. You know, or, or a leader that you, you've had wrong feelings towards and you've said things you shouldn't say. And God's saying, I want you to restore that. That's, I want to bring unity back into this situation. Hallelujah, yes. praise you, And I want to talk about that, that it's a choice. Yes. Because in this season, in this journey, I've had dear friends, best friends of mine, say the wrong thing to me yes. at the wrong time. 
And I've had to make a choice. Yes. To be grace filled, to be so honest, grace. to also be real with how that made me feel in yeah. that moment. But I also had to decide that I'm not going to write off that relationship so and that I'm going to ask God to fill in those gaps yeah. because it would be so easy to actually lose a lot of relationships yeah. during this time yeah. for not wanting to do the hard work. That's right. It's really hard to say that someone yeah. hurt you when you know they didn't mean to hurt you. Yeah. But if you don't say it, then yeah. they don't know. Yeah, they don't so know. good. They don't so know. So good. And God gave you a verse. Yes, and yes, what yes. I, what, what I love about what God gave her, it so connects with opening night mm. of conference. So it's so beautiful. Yes, I'm going to read it to all of us. Galatians 4, 4. But when the right time came, and it is the right time right now. But when the right time came, God sent his son born of a woman. Yeah. And I feel like the right time is now yeah. for us as God's daughters. And he is wanting to birth new things from us. Like he's yeah. trusting us. So if he trusted Mary with Jesus, that is a perfect picture to remind us that he's trusting us yes. with something in this moment in history. Yes. And now more than ever, we are called to give birth to the right wow, things so because our world is waiting for yeah. what's on the inside of us to come out. We just can't keep thinking it and blogging about it and posting about it, but we have to walk it out because yes. what's planted on the inside of us is actually the harvest that the next generation is going to so eat good. on, but we have to give birth to it. Well, and birth isn't easy, girls. It's messy. <laughs> it's painful. <laughs> Sometimes you're not cute. When I was pregnant, I was not cute. It was not a look or a vibe. People felt sorry for me. <laughs> they were concerned. Yeah, I, just, I, mean, I just looked. I just, it was not a good look. So sometimes when you're in labor, y'all know it's, yes. it's not pretty. Yes, I just believe God's going to take us all to another yeah. level. Yeah. You know, we're going to reach more girls than ever before right. because That's of right. the unity that he's creating right now through this session. Right. Praise you, Jesus. Well, we love you so much. Thank you for sharing this with us. And I can't wait to hear your stories because yeah. I believe we're going to hear stories of how God Healing. set people free, yes. how God redeemed and restored yes. and brought lives back together again to uh, reveal his goodness and grace to the world. Love you so much. Love you. Bye. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today on The Pink Mug. Be sure to tune in right here on the second Tuesday of each month for a brand new episode. We would love for you to like and share today's show with your friends and connect with us on social media. Follow Design Sisterhood on Facebook and Instagram to learn more about who we are as a sisterhood and how you can be a part.